we derived Cauchy's equations by another method. Uh, you, you know that we have derived this equation using two different methods and uh, still we obtain the same. And here is a, another method that by applying direct Newton's laws of motion, we arrive at the same equation. So it gives us the confidence that the same equation can be derived by, the, uh, by different methods, but by applying uh, rules that prevail, that govern the laws of fluid motion. That gives us the confidence that Cauchy's uh, equations are valid equations. This is another matter, how useful they are and how much useful they are not. That's another uh, point. But we arrive at the equations uh, considering the main governing points that govern the uh, fluid motion. So another method that we apply is actually the Newton's law. Then the Newton's second law of motion is F is equal to MA. When we derive that, so we, uh, the force is given by mass into acceleration. Acceleration is a rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So A is given by, given as dV by dt. That reflects, that gives us the derivative of velocity with respect to time, and that is uh, acceleration. Uh, however, the difference here is that this is an acceleration following a fluid element. So if we follow with the fluid element, then this acceleration uh, will have one or two terms that are coming into it with, you, with which you are already familiar because we have discussed these things at length. So by Newton's second law of motion, applied to a, a material element in the fluid, uh, that is moving with the motion, we arrive at the same equation. So all we are doing is trying to follow the material element and its acceleration. So rho equal to dv by dt should be equal to ma. So we are trying to equate force equals mass into acceleration. Mass into acceleration means mass into dv by dt given by these quantities. So when we are equating the total forces that are acting on the fluid motion, then we are coming to this. These are the summation of the forces. Here there are gravitational forces that are acting, and these are the surface forces that are acting on the motion. So still the Cauchy's equation, and the component-wise, x component will be rho du by dt if u is the U, V, W are X, Y, Z components of the velocity in I, J, in X, Y, Z direction in Cartesian coordinates, then the equation can be written, the X component can be written in this form. So, which is just the expansion of this. So, the same equation coming from F is equal to mass into acceleration. And therefore, Rho is density reflecting the mass and uh, dV by dt giving us the value of acceleration. All this quantity is force that is being applied on the fluid motion. So, and when we equate it with the forces that are occurring in it by considering forces component-wise, then the gravitational forces plus the surface forces that we have discussed in detail already, uh, we obtain these equations. These are only the components, but in vector form, we can write it in this way. And again, you will see that this is the same Cauchy's equation which we obtain earlier. So this is identical to the other two equations, and it gives us the confidence in the validity of the Cauchy's equation. Uh, so we have seen that we can obtain this equation for fluid motion uh, in three different method, methods arriving at the same result. Then to summarize the same things that what we have just discussed, 
the equation, the Cauchy's equation, uh, we have arrived this, at this result by using three different methods. And you can see that the last method appears to be very simple and very easy. These are only the expansion in the x, y, z directions. But nevertheless, even by doing some algebra, by trying to do, considering uh, deriving this equation by using infinitesimal uh, volume of the fluid, or in this case, following the material and trying to compute F is equal to MA, still gives us the same result, and that gives us confidence that we arrive at the Cauchy's equation by using three different methods. And when we see that acceleration or the derivative of the velocity following the material, the fluid material element is indicated here in a small infinitesimal cube with sides dx, dy, dz that has been considered or that are considered times and again when we consider the methodology of differential calculus.